Hello YouTube and especially all you knife people out there actually have a pretty short video by comparison this time around. Um, if you've been following my channel you've seen that I've been assembling a couple of Enzo knives lately um, and the first one that um, I picked up actually I didn't do a video on because it was pre-assembled by Enzo. Then I did another one with the curly birch uh, stock candles with some custom red mosaic pins. Then I did the last one was the 01 uh, trapper that I did um, a contoured handle. I've got all these linked below and I'm actually going to show you the, the products now. But the last one that I put together was the uh, 12C27 trapper 115 mil, which is a longer uh, blade. But I was between cameras. I'm actually using yet another camera this time around. And uh, I did not film that process. Basically, the process is entirely the same as in the previous video. So I'm just going to save you guys a lot of time in having to watch another video that's very similar. And I'm going to show you the final product and talk to you a little bit about the wooden stuff that I used. And then I'll compare it to uh, the ones that I've done before. So I will start off with the knife that I just assembled. And it is in a custom Enzo case, and I'm going to try to uh, zoom in up close on this one, and hopefully it won't be as problematic as the last video. So uh, I'll start off with the fire steel, and basically all it is is just a kind of a tapered block. Let's see if I can get this to focus closer up here. Just a tapered block, um, as I've kind of done before. You can see the colors here. They're really pretty. Came out kind of nice. Not exactly as they were sampled in the image uh, that were provided in the listing on eBay. Again, I've linked the... Um, the eBay account below so you can kind of check their products and stuff out but this is basically what it is standard fire steel um, with a brass uh, lanyard loop up here in the front and then a double fisherman's knot kind of to, to round thing up on some shock cord I made the um, fire steel handle this time a little bit longer with a slider taper instead of wider and blockier I'll show you another uh, example that I've done here in a minute but if you've seen my last uh, uh, video you'll know what I'm talking about so there's the the fire steel for this one and this is in the Enzo uh, branded sheath and I'll just pull this out for you now and basically uh, what I've done was I did a cross between the, the flat slim kind of stock um, handles that you would normally get from Enzo and the contour uh, kind of extreme contour that I did last time so again if if the two previous knives that I did, I guess, were like to have offspring. This would kind of be what it is. A lot um, uh, kind of simpler uh, taper. You can see it here. There is a taper here up at the front and toward the back, but it's not nearly as pronounced. And uh, this, is this is ghost green jade scales that I've used in here. But because they're mostly translucent, the ghost green jade kind of picks up the color that's below it. In this case, it's really dark. So it came out almost like a hunter green. Um, and that works fine for me. I think it's, it's kind of nice looking. And because of all of these tones that are in here, these natural tones, I decided to go with brass um, from the lanyard loop and the pins. These are just straight up brass pins. Um, the lanyard loop opening on this version of the Trapper, this is again the 15 mil, is slightly larger in opening than you would normally get in a knife. I'll show you a comparison again in a minute. But overall, really, really pretty. And some of this looks pitted here maybe a little bit, but that is filled in with CA glue and some dust or just CA glue. So there's actually no pits. It's kind of clear. Does a good job for that. But there's an idea about how the contouring and stuff works for this knife. Um, really beautiful. I, I really like how this came out. Let me see if I can get this to focus back. Here we go. And um, I'm hoping that you like it as well. So I am going to show you how this compares to some of the other ones that I've put together. Before I do that, though, I want to take you back and show you the sheath. Now, when I put this together, I had it in a temporary sheath because the thickness of this handle, and I'll show you more of that in comparison in a minute, would not fit inside a standard Enzo sheath. It didn't have enough girth through the middle. So this, I linked it in the video that I did, but I did not have the sample to show you at the time because I picked it up after I had edited uh, the video. This is a sheath from LT Wright Knives. I believe it's the uh, E or the K, I can't remember. I'll link that below. I should have looked it up before I came out here to shoot this, I apologize. But I did link it below. Excellent quality sheath. It's got the dangler like I like. Um, you can remove it if you want to unscrew this right here, but just a really beautifully done sheath. I love it. <clears throat> In fact, because the price difference isn't super significant between the 
one that LT Wright provides, and again, I think it's made by a different manufacturer. Um, I will probably be using this um, for all of my future Enzo builds. I just really like it as compared. It's very similar, but I like the end result um, of this product better than the Enzo. So there's that. Um, I'll show you what I meant about the fire steel loops. Not that it's a huge deal, but this last one that I did, um, you can see here that this is very um, blocky toward the top with a more of abrupt taper. This one is longer and more slender. So just trying something different to see what it is I like. And so that's the comparison between the two. And then the blades themselves, there's a there's a side by side difference between the the one on the top is the standard 95 mil trapper and below is the uh, 12C27 is the only steel that it's available in now in the 115 mil. You can still find the Badger. The Badger is usually only available in D2, but there you see the size differences. I will be trying these out. As mentioned, the lanyard holes are slightly different in girth. This one is, I can't remember the exact dimensions, I'll put it below, but this one is a quarter inch, and this one right here is a little bit above that, um, so more pronounced there. It was an in-between hole grind that, that came on this trapper, so I wound up just boring it out to the next size uh, lanyard hole up that I could get. Um, when you look at the handles from, let me just get these this way, the top down, you'll see the one on this side is much thicker and has a much more pronounced taper in the handle than the one on the left. And again, a very, very slight taper there. But both, both made from stabilized woods and uh, both very beautiful in their own right. But I did want to show you kind of where I went with this. So this one, obviously, a more pronounced um, contouring. And then in, this is another one that I assembled. This one's in the flat ground LMAX. Uh, I'll try to show you these side by side as well. Uh, these are stock candles that all I did was, was sand. I did not change the contouring of them at all. So you can see the differences there. And this is just very, very thin and flat. This one is thicker and has some slight contouring to it, but kind of in the middle of the two. And then the other one that I have is the M2 uh, curly birch that came from Breeza um, via, you know, American provider. I think this one was DLT trading. This one's just got some crud on the blade. I was, I have used these for a little bit of woodworking in the backyard, just kind of feather sticking, notching and stuff, just to play with the steels a little bit, uh, testing for, for throwing sparks and that sort of thing. But I've done no extensive uh, blade testing yet, and that is what I hope to be doing in the coming weeks or months to get out and try these four side by side. So to go back through them, I have the M2 in the Scandi ground. This is with the stock curly birch handle. This is the LMAX, also the Trapper 95, curly birch uh, handles that I assembled. This is in the flat ground LMAX. The next one that we have is this is the um, 01 Enzo Trapper 95 mil. This is in, uh, yeah, I said 01 and this is in the stabilized wood. And then the last one, don't want to cut any fingers off showing you these, is the 12C27 115 mil. Now, three of the four are in the Scandi grind. Um, you can get, I believe, still the M2, which is all the way over to this side of the screen over here, in flat and Scandi. Um, it may be a lot more available in the Scandi now, but these are the four that I have to try. Uh, different grinds for sure. I have decided to leave the original factory V edge here on the LMAX flat ground when I go to test them because I normally kind of grind that out and do a, a, a micro um, convex as it were. But those are the final four, if you will. And what I'm really curious about is how these three steels compare to one another, how they perform in various camp tasks like I've done in my other videos for the most part. And I will try not to be super... Um, you know, kind of give too much emphasis to the handle design. I will say if something is more or less comfortable or slick or what have you, but given that I completely hand did these two out of stabilized wood and these two are uh, lighter and slimmer, I will try to put emphasis on the steel performances over the, um, the performance of the handle, though, like I said, I may give my two cents there. So that's where I'm at, guys. So that is it. Uh, I wanted to show you briefly how this uh, knife came out, how it compares to the other ones that I've built, and uh, 
let you know that hopefully in the coming weeks or months, I will have time to get out and test these four steels side by side. Again, I'll kind of do up a close up here and show you um, how the little uh, nuances came out. Contouring, etc. Uh, as much as I really do love this knife and the contouring, I would say of, the, of the, all the ones that I've assembled so far, I kind of like this mild contouring the best. This really pronounced contouring is awesome. It feels incredibly different in the hand. Um, I may prefer this more when I'm actually using this, um, and let me try to get this to focus here, more using this uh, on wood task and stuff, only time will tell. My friend who was last night, who, who was here last night, who has a lot bigger, uh, thicker, meatier hands, preferred this grip because of the palm swell in the middle. I really love these crazy colors. I, I'm really loving and digging these colors, but I like how this handle um, kind of simplicity, slight contouring came out maybe the most at this point. We'll see. But there you go, guys. That's the final product in the, uh, the four Enzos that I planned on uh, assembling, comparing, messing around with. And hopefully the next video will be coming soon to uh, test these in the field and then share those findings with you because there's a lot of still offerings from Enzo. And these are probably four of the more popular ones, and I'm hoping to get them in a side-by-side -side comparison and see what happens. All right, guys, that'll do it for this video. I hope that you are loving your knives, your collections, uh, your assembly. If you haven't tried it and you've got some, you know, some tools, give it a go. Um, it's just a lot of fun, and it's supremely addictive, so also be careful with that. But um, until next time, guys, regardless, I hope you're enjoying um, your time in the outdoors. And until then, be safe and God bless.